Hello everyone, welcome to English Ambition and I am Kakuli, your guide and mentor and I am here to make your journey of English simple and interesting. And today we are doing the second poem of Flamingo that is an elementary school classroom in a slum. It is composed by Stephen Spender. He was a poet, he was an author and in this poem he talks about the class injustice or the social inequalities that exists in our society. So as I told you for lost spring, I will tell the same thing over here. Please do this poem with a sensitive heart so that you can feel the pain and the suffering that exists in our society. Okay, so let's begin. Far, far from gusty waves these children's faces. Now children, we have to remember that this poem has many figures of speech, especially metaphors. Okay, so you please remember, write and make note of these figures of speech. They will be very helpful because questions are asked from these only. Now, the poet in the first stanza tells us about the children of the slum school. There is an elementary school in a slum and the first stanza depicts those children, how they look, what is their physical condition, what are the miseries that they are suffering from, okay? And he begins like this only, that far, far from the gusty waves these children's faces. Now, what do we mean by gusty waves? We begin with a metaphor. Gusty means enthusiastic, energetic, powerful and waves means you know those children of the mainstream society so this is a metaphor gusty waves refer to the energetic enthusiastic mainstream children and the poet says the children of the elementary slum school are far away from them they do not have that energy that enthusiasm in their face and in their body language so this is a metaphor Next, we come to the second line. Like rootless weeds, the hair torn round their pallor. Like rootless weeds, the moment we have the word like, we understand that it might be a simile. So the next figure of speech that we get here is simile and like rootless weeds. Now underline rootless weeds, what does it mean? First of all, weed means unwanted plant. So these children are unwanted in the society nobody wants them and what do we mean by rootless we mean they don't have uh, they do not have any foundation whether it's economic whether it's educational whether it's social so they have no grip no root in the society and they are unwanted then their hair is torn around their pallor what does it mean the hair is untidy unkempt and they are scattered all all over their face pallor please underline it is pale face pale means without any radiance without any beauty you know lacking good health okay so hair is scattered around their face now the poet describes first he describes three children okay fourth one i will tell you separately the first three children depict the misery the disease and the pathetic condition that these people survive in okay the first child the tall girl with her weighed down head weighed down head means her head is weighed down with a burden okay ये जो गरीबी है बीमारी है रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है उसके बोझ तले ऐसा लग रहा है कि शी इज सफरिंग सो वेट डाउन हेड वेट डाउन अंडर द बर्डन ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी मिजरी एंड पॉवर्टी सो द फर्स्ट गर्ल नाउ द सेकेंड चाइल्ड हु इज अ बॉय द पेपर सीमिंग बॉय विथ रैट्स आईज पेपर सीमिंग बॉय अंडरलाइन इट इज अ मेटोफर अगेन रैट्स आईज अंडरलाइन इट इज अगेन अ मेटोफर why metaphor paper seeming boy 
very thin, malnourished, famished. Malnourished means undernutritioned. Okay, famished means bhuka, usko khana nahi milta. He is hungry. Okay, and he is pale again, lacks the healthy look. Okay, so this is a metaphor. Next. Rat's eyes. Rat's eyes is again as you have all of you have seen rats. They have a hungry look and they are always very afraid. वो तो अलग बात है कि when we see rat we are more afraid than the rat. But the rat is also afraid. Okay, if you look at the eyes of the rats, you will see an uh, you know a timid look on their eyes. Timid means afraid. and hungry so the boy also had that hungry look on his eyes and he also was afraid he lacked that confidence in his look the third child the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bones reciting a father's null disease his lesson from his desk now this is again very important the third child is stunted in growth stunted means short height he has stopped growing after a certain age wo chhota sa thoda sa stunted growth wala ladka hai and he is called an unlucky heir very important question please underline who is an heir h e i r heir means successor okay so he has inherited his father's twisted bone disease uske father ka ek disease tha like twisted bone kuch bone ki kuch bimari hai to he has inherited that disease okay it must be a genetically transmitted disease so he has inherited his father's twisted bone disease and that is why he is called unlucky the question comes why is he regarded as unlucky we have to say that he has inherited his father's twisted bone disease that's why he is regarded as unlucky so we have got a clear picture of the first three children they depict sorrow they depict misery they depict poverty they depict diseases that are very much common in that slum now we come to the fourth student over here however the fourth child is different from the first three let's see how the poet says at the back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this what does it mean the poet says that there is a fourth child he is completely different from the first three children or the rest of the children in the classroom he is not completely lost he is not completely engulfed in the gloom and despair and poverty his eyes still shine with the glories of childhood hai na jaise bachcho ka hota hai ko padhne ko kisko man karta hai lagta hai ki main khelne jaau bhag jaau aise open valley ho meadow ho ped ho wahan pe khelu hai to free like a squirrel so he also wants to do this he wants to be free so his eyes gleam and shine with a dream of a free better future unlike the other children in whose eyes we could see poverty and hunger okay so with this ray of hope the poet ends this stanza one word i will draw your attention towards is dim if you see the word dim classroom underline that it not only signifies the lack of light in the classroom lack of ventilation it also signifies the hopelessness and the lack of light and enlightenment in the life of these children okay so this is very important now let us move to the second stanza what does the poet explain in the second stanza he describes the classroom how it looks like what are the things that are put up on the wall so let's see what he says on sour cream walls donations shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities belled flowery tyrolese valley open handed map awarding the world its world the poet says that on the sour cream wall sour cream wall ka kya matlab hai cream wall we all know you know off white cream colored wall sour means what it is neglected it is dirty that means 
इट लैक्स मेंटेनेंस अगेन वही चीज शो करता है कि ये जो बच्चे हैं ये अनवॉन्टेड है दे आर निग्लेक्टेड गवर्नमेंट भी डजेंट टेक एनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ दीज चिल्ड्रन प्रॉपरली सो ये प्रॉपरली पेंटेड नहीं है वॉल्स आर डर्टी एंड सार कैन ऑल्सो मीन द होपलेसनेस इन देयर लाइफ द सारनेस इन देयर लाइफ नेक्स्ट वॉट आर द थिंग्स दैट आर पेस्टेड ऑन द वॉल नंबर वन शेक्सपियर्स हेड नंबर टू द ब्यूटिफुल पिक्चर ऑफ टायरोलीज वैली नंबर थ्री अ ब्यूटिफुल पिक्चर ऑफ अ डॉन यू नो मॉर्निंग डॉन मीन जस्ट बिफोर सनराइज अर्ली अर्ली मॉर्निंग ब्यूटिफुल पिक्चर ऑफ अ डॉन नेक्स्ट वॉट इज देयर अ पिक्चर ऑफ अ सिटी विद ब्यूटिफुल आर्किटेक्चर ओके डोम मीन्स ये जो गोल वाला जो स्ट्रक्चर होता है जैसे ताजमहल का है वैसा सो दे हैव सच ब्यूटिफुल पिक्चर्स पेस्टेड ऑन द वॉल एंड द लास्ट थिंग दैट इज देयर इज द ब्यूटिफुल ह्यूज इलेबरेट वर्ल्ड मैप अ ओपन हैंडेड वर्ल्ड मैप now the irony the sorrow the tragedy that the poet highlights over here is he says though such beautiful pictures are pasted they have no relevance no connection no significance with the lives of these children jaise ki agar hum shakespeare ki baat le le the life of shakespeare or the education that is symbolized by shakespeare high class education okay because shakespeare wrote about people who are rich the world of the luxury the world of adventure the world of romance इनके लाइफ में क्या वो है दे आर द अनफॉर्चुनेट पीपल हु आर डिप्राइव ऑफ ऑल दोज थिंग्स दैट आर डिपिक्टेड बाय शेक्सपियर वो जो टायरोलीस वैली है टायरोलीस वैली क्या है इट इज अ वैली इन ऑस्ट्रिया इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल प्लेस यू नो विद ब्यूटिफुल सीनिक ब्यूटी बट कैन दे गो एंड एंजॉय दैट टायरोलीस वैली नो बिकॉज देयर लाइफ आर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड इन दिस डर्टी filthy dark dingy slum so the poet says ye jo pictures hai jo world map hai world map mein jo itne acche acche shehar hai the you know the cities the, the countries the rivers that are depicted in the world map तभी ये लोग वहां जा पाएंगे क्या सो वाई आर दीज पिक्चर्स पेस्टेड ऑन द वॉल इट इज अ ग्रेट आयरनी दैट नन ऑफ दीज पिक्चर्स हैव एनी रेलिवेंस इन द लाइफ ऑफ दीज चिल्ड्रन वॉट इज देयर फ्यूचर विच इज देयर वर्ल्ड लेट सी ही सेज and yet for these children these windows and not the map is their world what is their world their world is seen through the window and it is not in that world map okay where all their futures painted with a fog again this is a metaphor please underline futures painted with a fog very important fog ka kya matlab hai fog is dhund जैसे कभी फॉग है मिस्ट है हमको क्या होता है सामने हमको कुछ दिखता नहीं है सपोज यू आर ड्राइविंग एंड देर इज फॉग वॉट हैपन्स यू डोंट नो दैट वॉट इज देयर इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू दैट मीन्स इट इज अनसर्टन सो इन द सेम मैनर देयर लाइव आर अनसर्टन देयर फ्यूचर इज अनसर्टन सो दैट इज देयर वर्ल्ड एंड वॉट कैन दे सी थ्रू द विंडो दे कैन सी a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky underline lead sky far far away from the rivers and capes and the stars of worlds the poet says over here that their lives are far far away from those pictures from the words from the world of shakespeare from the valley from the mountain from the rivers from the world map their reality their their world can be seen through the window and what can they see through the window they can see number 1 their bleak dark uncertain future number 2 what can they see they can see a narrow dirty road of the slum and that is also blocked with a lead sky underline lead sky metaphor again and lead sky yahan pe kya matlab hai lead is means dark polluted and again signify 
lying there hopeless misery stricken poverty stricken life is it okay so we are done with the second stanza now let's come to the next stanza in this stanza the poet talks about the living conditions of the slum dwellers their pathetic life conditions their miserable poverty stricken life now let's see what he says Surely Shakespeare is wicked the map a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal very very important lines very important for question why does the poet call Shakespeare wicked and the map a bad example now the poet tries to say that the way these people survived you know in a pathetic life in a poverty stricken life when they read about the life of the people that shakespeare depicted the world of luxury the world of romance and adventure they are attracted towards it but are they able to achieve it the poet says no in a normal manner in an honest manner it is impossible for them to aspire those things that are depicted through the world of shakespeare so what do they do they are tempted to steal they adopt unfair means so the poet over here tries to highlight that why show them such pictures that are far away from their lives so that in the pursuit of such high life or living they are forced to adopt unfair means let's come to the next line for lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes from fog to endless night very beautiful expression from fog to endless night that means what they are trapped in that slum from fog from uncertainty to endless night night means what darkness of misery of poverty and of illiteracy so they are trapped in that world of uncertainty of darkness of misery so why should you show them those pictures which are not meant for them that are never meant to be fulfilled on their slag heap these children wear skins peeped through their bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass very again important over here slag heap refers to the waste material the waste product of iron and steel industry okay so again this is a metaphor please underline please write this is a metaphor again their bodies or they the slum children the small children they are compared to waste product like slag okay again because they are unwanted they are not wanted in the society next we see that they are very very thin their skeleton can be seen through their body and what do they wear they wear spectacles that are repaired that are broken that are mended because they are poor they do not have money okay they are wearing spectacles that are broken that we get in the next line also like bottle bits on stone underline like bottle bits on stone this is again a figure of speech simile because we get to see the word like generally i have taught you again and again that whenever there is a like there is a chance that it can be a simile now why is it a simile see hum log agar ek patthar lete hain aur ek kaanch ke upar aise marte hain on a bottle or any other glass kya hoga wo toot jayega wo aise क्रैक आ जाएगा सो so, पोएट यहाँ पे ये कहना चाह रहे ये जो चश्मा पहनते थे कोई कोई बच्चा दे वर ब्रोकन दे वर क्रैक बट उनके पास ये पैसा भी नहीं है कि वो इसको ठीक कर ले या नया स्पेक्स ले ले ओके सो दीज पार्ट्स डिपिक्ट द पॉवर्टी ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन all of their time and space are foggy slum as i told you throughout their lives they are trapped they are confined in that foggy uncertain dark slum the last line so blot their maps with slums as big as doom the poet says when we cannot give them the facilities to realize their dreams okay or to reach those lives that are pasted on the 
wall we remember what uh, pictures were pasted on the wall world map shakespeare's picture beautiful tyrolese valley a picture of a beautiful city the poet says we are not giving them the proper education and facility so that they can actually enjoy those lives then why are we showing them a hope which is not meant for them why are we giving them a false misleading hope put the picture on the slum instead of putting all those beautiful pictures ek kaam karte hai let us put the picture of the slum why because that is their reality they will not be tempted to lead such luxurious life that are depicted on the pictures so the poet is very angry in reality he doesn't want that he wants that these people should get the facility so that they can transform their lives and actually realize their dreams but because such facilities are not given to them the poet expresses his wrath he expresses his frustration and says ek kaam karte hain ye jo inke walls इनमें से अच्छे अच्छे पिक्चर्स हटा देते हैं और स्लम का पिक्चर रख देते हैं ताकि एटलीस्ट दे विल नॉट बी टेम्प्टेड टू लीड सच अ लाइफ ओके now let's move to the last stanza now the last stanza is a little different from the first three stanzas why the first three stanzas depict the poverty the misery the pathetic condition of these poor children and the slum dwellers in the last stanza the poet seems to be in a little optimistic mood aisa lag raha hai ki unhone apna gussa nikal diya he has went out all his anger and his frustration and he is in a reconciliatory tone okay what does he say over here he now in this last stanza makes an appeal to the government to the governors to the officials to take some facilities or to take some steps for these children to give them proper education so that they can also achieve glory and success in their life so let's see unless the governor inspector visitor this map becomes their window means the map becomes their window means what the map becomes their world their future and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacomb very important phrase children third line please underline like catacomb again the word like is there so it is a simile again and catacomb ka kya matlab hai catacomb is underground cemetery graveyard okay poet is comparing the slum to a graveyard why jaise insaan ke marne ke baad aur graveyard mein there is no life it is darkness it is hopeless there is no future the poet says their life is also similar to a dead person as if they are living in a cemetery they are living in a graveyard or a catacomb so the poet says that give them that energy that enlightenment and that knowledge so that they can break out of these slums and break a very important question comes over here what does the poet want these children to break our answer will be social barrier social injustice and they should also go to the mainstream they should also enjoy the facilities that are enjoyed by their mainstream children what their lc says and show the children the green field and make their world run azure on gold sand okay let them enjoy the beauty of the world azure means blue so let them enjoy the blue sky the golden sand and let them enjoy the beauty of nature let their tongues run naked into books that means what give them freedom of speech give them the true taste of education of knowledge the white and green leaves again very important question what do the phrase white and green leaves signify white leaves signifies books 
pages education and green leaves signify nature of the trees the green leaves of the trees so the poet basically wants them to get proper education because we know education is the key to enlightenment key to power and key to success so if you have education you can explore the world you can break the barrier of the slum and enjoy the beauty of the world so the poet wants them to have that the last line very beautiful line history is theirs whose language is the sun now the moment we talk about sun हमारे दिमाग में क्या आता है सन वॉट डज सन सिम्बलाइज ऑब्वियसली लाइट पावर एनर्जी इज इंट इट सो द पोएट से इज गिव दैम द एनर्जी द पावर द नॉलेज ऑफ द सन बिकॉज ओनली दे कैन क्रिएट हिस्ट्री हु आर एज पावरफुल एज नॉलेजेबल एज एनलाइटेंड एज एनर्जेटिक एज द सन इज इट पॉसिबल फॉर दीज चिल्ड्रन अगर ये स्लम में ही रह जाते हैं पूरे लाइफ अगर ये तब भी पॉसिबल होगा इनके लिए कि दे विल ऑल्सो क्रिएट हिस्ट्री फॉर दैम सेल्स ही says no give them education so that they can break the barriers of the slum and move in into the world explore the world and create history for themselves okay so with this we come to the end of the beautiful poem but definitely it touches our heart it is sad also but yet it is beautifully depicted by the poet now as i do always i have already told you the important questions but a quick you know a glance at the questions once more in the first stanza we see that the poet depicts the three or four children three sad one a little happy and optimistic okay so the first question that can come is the depiction of these three children separately it can be the girl with weighed down head it can be with a boy with a rat size the paper seeming boy it can also be the third child the child with the stunted growth the unlucky heir of his father's gnarled disease to so explanation of the these three children separately can be the question fourth definitely the fourth question from the first stanza is the depiction of the fourth child the young unnoted boy who had dreams in his eyes now let's move to the second stanza very important question which i have discussed in detail what is ironical about those pictures that are depicted in the on the wall okay we will say that they are far far away from the world of the children they are completely relevant and insignificant okay next futures painted with a fog uncertainty bleakness gloom next if we come to the third stanza very important question why is shakespeare wicked and the map a bad example i have discussed with you in details okay and what does it mean that from fog to endless night very important line from misery to sorrow to endless darkness and illiteracy the next is the fourth stanza fourth stanza a very very important question comes children what does the poet want for the slum dwellers actually what is his intention what does he want these people to achieve a very important question from the fourth stanza that also i have discussed at the end okay he wants them to be free he wants them to enjoy the world and how can they do it through proper facilities through proper education and with that they can create history for themselves okay so with this i come to the end of this poem i'm sure all of you have enjoyed it thank you and see you in my next video